What's up guys, Nick Major here, APTV correspondent out here on the Vans Warped Tour all summer long. I sat down and had an in-depth interview with Michael from Issues to discuss his entire musical past from the age of five to where he is now. So stay tuned to see what he had to say. I don't know where you are in your mind, mind. Listen to your soul, shine to find and try back to your heart from the car to the yard. About time that we're face to face. Yes. Actually, well, I was going to say, um, we've had a few little interviews, but one we couldn't even release. Do you remember the one that we did at, uh, what was the Sacramento Festival? Is that where we were on the hay? Yes, and the entire <laughs> band was there, and we had two microphones, and I yes. went back to edit it, and you could not hear what a single person was saying. Really? Yeah. Dude. We, we never I dropped really, that. because. And then the monster girl, we invited the monster girls over. That's And they were uh, all sitting around us. Yeah, we are just like, so what's, it was a mess, though. <laughs> that was a whole funny interview. It was but. funny, but unfortunately nothing could be heard, which all sucks good. too bad. All good. But I would love to know just about you in general, because I, I I've never really chat with you much about like like where you're from, how you grew up and stuff, and ended up doing what you, what you were, are doing now. So, who was Michael Bond back in the days when you were still just like a little youngling? Where are you from? What what was the childhood like? Wow. And what made you want to be a rock star? Um, wow. Dang, I could give it a I can get pretty deep into some stuff, but uh, I'll try not to make it too long. But uh. Uh, I like this. I like this, by the way. Um, basically, ever since I was a little kid, uh, music's just always just been something that's a part of my life. Um, I saw my first concert when I was like five years old. And Who it was, was it? It was Bon Jovi. And, <laughs> Your first concert at five uh, years old yeah, was Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. My mom and my aunt and my uncle, uh, they all took me because I loved Bon Jovi. Um, and they would give me like little like joke guitars. Not like joke guitars, but little kitty like guitar ones, yeah mini kid ones. yeah like plastic guitars and stuff and then like uh, my mom and dad for whatever reason and nobody in my family really plays music really that's so funny because when you said weird. that you're going to bon jovi at five i assumed you had these musical parents and no stuff, no but um i mean they my family loves music but like they just don't perform it. yeah they don't perform it exactly so um but whatever they um they like would get me like the, they got me like a little kid drum kit and everything and like of course i didn't know what i was doing back then but i just knew like i would just watch from from day one i would just watch like bon jovi and like mtv back in the day when they actually showed music videos it wasn't just snooky um <laughs> i do love jersey shore though uh, <laughs> but but yeah but, um, so you were watching yeah, all that like, stuff. like you know like mtv i i even from day one i was just like hooked you know like like they show music videos and i would see like 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 I said, uh, Bon Jovi was like my idol back then, and, and I, would, I saw that, and I was just fascinated. Like, like even at, from the age of like five years old. Do like, you like, remember any yeah, of that concert? Y yes, actually, I fell. I do remember I fell asleep at the very end because I was just so little. And you were five. Just, yeah, it was like it was like way past my bedtime. But um, but I remember like being on my like aunt and uncle's shoulders. And they put me on the shoulders, and I was just like. I'm seeing Bon Jovi right now, like, like, and it was cool. Like, I mean, I was like super young, but I remember, I remember like bits and pieces of it, and like, just like being fascinated. And I was just like, it's so hard to like, I don't, it's, it's hard for people to like believe you, but it's just kind of like, at five years old, I knew what I wanted to do with my life, you know. Like, and not many people, I guess, like, are like that. I guess, like, but um, not even trying to like toot my own horn or anything, but like, you know, it's like at five years old, I just was like. I'm going to do that, you know, and seeing it in person and just having that goal for as long, all throughout my, you know, like, like kindergarten, like, like elementary school, so middle yeah, school, so high school, like I had that goal and I kept it, you know, so, um, but the it, older you got, how did, how did you, uh, pursue that? Like elementary school, middle school, were you playing any instruments? Were yeah. You, yeah. Um, eventually like, like I, uh, still to this day, I can't play guitar to save my life, but, um, I uh, I got into drums and that was like my thing, you know. Um, and I would just like, like I said, when I was like very little, my parents got me like the little kid set and everything. And um, and uh, uh, in middle school, I joined marching band. So I played snare and bass in in marching band. And um, that's when I started to kind of like take drums seriously. I was like, this is actually fun, you know. Like this is really cool. And um, cause prior to that like you know i was like i was like pretty young you know like i wasn't like i didn't really know what i was doing and then um i got in marching band and um uh it ended up being like a really good marching band um and uh our drum and our, our not drum instructor but our band instructor he uh he taught me a lot and he was great and we ended up like going to disney and like performing at disney and like like it was a pretty serious like 
thing for me at the time and I was just like wow this is really cool and then that that was kind of like the gateway into everything I guess and um even though it was just like marching band you know I, like I learned a lot you know I learned how to read music I learned how to play drums I know, but you it was know, still I, like, doing the music thing that you had since the age of five yeah 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 do. and that was like any anywhere I could get in you know like I would you know and that was the first thing that really like that I like took that step and I was just like you know what I'm gonna join marching band like mm -hmm. this is this is gonna be sick like like and I did and um and but unfortunately in high school I like I just kind of grew out of it and I was like you know I don't want to just play snare I want to actually play drums like and uh be like a touring act so throughout high school um I was kind of in like a in like some crappy local bands and stuff and like just kind of like how old were you when you made your first band and were you the drummer of it uh, I was I was um I uh first band ever First band ever. I want to know about this band. The, Tell the, me now. How old were you? What were you was, called? What kind of music were you? I was in like ninth grade, I think, and we didn't really take it too seriously. It was just like, oh, being in a band's cool. Like, and in high school, that's totally dude, the mindset. It was, isn't it was, it? it was atrocious. Like, like I can't even begin to tell you. Uh, our first cover song we did was "Smells Like Teen Spirit." Nice. Uh, which is, whew, that's a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get you. Oh yeah. What was the most serious band that you played drums in? Um. All right. So I was in various local bands like throughout high school and kind of like. And sorry to cut you off, but where are you from? And so where? Atlanta, Georgia. I grew up like what's like a suburb of Atlanta, like Gwinnett County, Walton County, like Loganville, Georgia. So probably never heard of it, but it's like. 35 40 minutes outside of the city all right so it's pretty Atlanta. close to the city yeah yeah that's cool because it's kind of like not i don't want to say it's in the middle of nowhere but it's, it's like on the outskirts though yeah it's on the so outskirts so you got your like your lakes and stuff around but you have if you want to go to the city like it's not too far off and so if you, you still wanna, live out that way yeah 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 yeah, right. yeah um so it's cool it's a cool area it's a nice area to grow up in good so. that's rad and uh so you were doing bands there you're for okay so your first serious band that you were doing drums so, in, playing shows i'm guessing and yeah so all right um, throughout high school, I kind of was just like, was just joking around and stuff, and, like messing around, just like, you know, like I knew I wanted to play drums and I was just like, I wanted to do that for a while. Um, but, um, I just, I didn't know how, you know, I didn't have any connections. I was just like, whatever, if I, if I get the, that golden ticket, I'm going to take it, you know, I'm out of here. So, um, this is kind of something that not a lot of people know, but, um, uh, when I grew up. Uh, when I was in high school, I was very active in church, and um, I played for my youth group. And Florida Georgia Line, the singer Tyler Hubbard. Mm -hmm. um, I went to church with him, and I played oh, drums. Small world. I played drums with uh, Tyler Hubbard, and uh, we were we led worship at like Loganville First Baptist Church and everything. And it was cool. I, I, like it was crazy. And then we had like this little side thing that we did, like this little kind of like a butt rock band um but um but it was cool I, I went to church with him and like played with him for years and um i still have like a little demo that we did in my sister's car and it's just funny how big with you gotten. guys on it hey, yeah me oh, and tyler sick. me and tyler yeah, is that yeah. up on youtube or anything no come no. on do you know how much kids would love that uh That'd it's, be so it's sick. pretty rough we recorded it in his bedroom actually it was just kind of funny but um i remember he called me up one day he's like hey man come on over i, I needed and this is before i could even like drive i was like 14 15 years old and uh, cause he's like a couple years older than me or whatever. But um, he was like, "Hey man, we did this song, recorded this song, and he just come over and, and actually played like, like con like the djembe on it or whatever, I guess." And um, we did it in his room, and it's just it's and pretty. And that's the funny. song that is in your sister's. Car. Yeah, yeah. My sister has the little CD. Like, do you guys uh, talk anymore still? No, uh, I know his brother. Uh, talked to his brother a couple times, you know, here and there on Facebook and stuff. But like, like he's just so big, man. Like they're just massive now. And then honestly, like props to him, you know, like it's great for him. But like, you know, if I could talk to him, like that'd be sick. But like, I just know he's. I'm out sure there you guys it. could have an awesome time catching up. And oh yeah, I would love if I if I ran into him. Like, like I'm sure we would be able to like catch up and stuff. But like I'd, you know, but I mean he's just they're just massive and he's just got so much stuff going on. So I get it, but. But uh, so it is you, what it is. so you uh, growing up but, um, are pretty religious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, growing up, uh, went to church like pretty much all my life, and then like I started taking drums seriously, like in, like I said in high school, and playing for my worship band, and then playing with Tyler or whatever. And then um, after that, I kind of like grew out of that, and kind of like 
but you know, I don't really want to necessarily play worship music. You know, like I was still at like religious and everything. Are I was still. Like, are you still religious? Uh, to an extent. To an extent. To an extent. There's some things that I've like kind of, you know, I question a lot about and stuff. But um, you grow up, and when you, you start grow to up, you, when you get out of that more. little small realm, something like you've been taught all your life, and you see like the world. It kind of opens your eyes a lot to a lot of stuff. You get a fresh perspective, especially exactly. when you're experiencing it yourself and not like surrounded by the people. people what people, have people the same are just telling you, you, exactly, you know, exactly. like, like you just go off of what people are telling you your whole life, and then all of a sudden you experience the world, and you're like, this changes a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, like not to say that I'm like not religious anymore, but like, but you're it's just like there's your some things have changed that, on some things. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, like, like so, like I I just like kind of was like, you know, I don't want to do the whole like worship thing. You know, I want to like create my own band you know like and i want to do something myself but um so anyways i was in this local band with my buddy briggs and it was kind of like grindcore and that's that's about the time what year was that uh probably like i graduated in 06 i'm old so was it around that time yeah like well it was like right after that so so probably like 2007 maybe or so that was the kind of time man yeah that's the kind of time like like 2006 2007 that was when i was getting into like under oath and like heavy music and then I started getting into really heavy stuff, like, you know, like the number 12 looks like you and Daughters like, and all that you stuff. You ever listened to Job for a Cowboy? Yeah, yeah, stuff that like that. Nice. But, like, like we wanted to do, like, uh, like a grindcore band. And, like, like we took it seriously, but, like, we just weren't that great. You were know, you the we, drums? Yeah, yeah. We didn't really know what we were doing. So, anyways, one day I got a call. There's a lot to this. So Go, go so, on. Carry on. We um, got no, no One day um, we would play local shows around our area and stuff, and, um, it was cool. There's this venue called the CCC, uh, two venues, one CCC and one that's the movement. And they would draw like this is back when local bands just didn't go to like, you know, straight to the label, you know, no offense for people that do that. Like, you know, but this is when uh, like the local scene was striving, man. Like, like, like so you, you like actually it's work so cool for to it, hear man. Though. Like, like not to say that like people don't aren't working for it now, you know, like, but. It just sucks. Like, we would play local shows, and these two venues would draw 400 people. You know, you'd have 400, 500 well, people back at a local years ago, show. before the internet and social media really you started know? to take over stuff, like, local scenes were sustainable scenes within themselves. They were, and they then were it thriving. was about growing outside of that if you were able to. Yeah, it was insane. And, like, and these local bands would set the bar, and you'd mm-hmm. say, I at least have to be that good. You know, like, like, there's local bands that really stood out, and some of them would get on, like, Warp Tour or like back in the day like Taste of Chaos they would open up Taste of Chaos and like and they would be local bands and then the other local bands would go okay I at least need to be doing that if I want to I need to be that good if I at least want to like get noticed you know and so these bands would set the bar and like people like the local scene was like thriving but it was you know? alive like, like it was like, alive and I, well like like, like it, was, exactly it was great I miss like when local so, scenes were like that, that yeah and so like cool. like we would play these venues but anyways there's this one band called Their Eyes Look North um, I saw them and I was just like, wow, this band is sick. And they were a local band. And uh, funny story, uh, their Isaac North had uh, Dylan, the singer from Of Machines, and Mark, the bassist from Of Machines. Um, they, we were in a band together. They asked me to play drums. Their drummer left. Uh, they asked me to play drums for a little while. And uh, I did. We went on this little mini tour and everything, like around like, like Tennessee, I think, like Alabama, Florida, or something like that. But like, it was cool, and um, so. But after that tour, uh, that's when they got the call. They got the call from Up Machines, and they said Up Machines guys were like, "We want Dylan and Mark." And then there I was like, North was no more. Oh yeah, because so Up Machines so, they were established, or they were a band before. They were, but they were like in the works. Like they were like getting kind of still picking people. members. Yeah, to yeah, they're the kind of like getting their, their stuff together. So they called Dylan and Mark, and they ended up forming Up Machines. So. You were like, I was like, it. that was my shot. So I was like, do I give up? Do I just like go back to church? Was like, dang it. Like, what do I do? You know? So I didn't really know what to do, but, um, I kept going and I just kept like, like kind of like looking around and there was a couple other kind of bigger local bands around at that time. And, um, anyways, uh, I started my own band. I was like, you know what? I'm going to start my own, like actual, like, were you project. still drums in this band? Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Um, well, no, no, not this band, not this band. After their Isaac North, oh. I was like, you know what? I might try vocals. And these guys oh. had these, this band, and uh, they asked me, hey, man, you want to come do – they told me, they asked me to do keys originally, and I was like, I don't really play keyboard. And I was like, but I am looking to do vocals. I was like, I'll try it. And then they were like, all right. 
cool. Like, mm-hmm. like you can come do vocals. So I did it, and uh, that band was a Pathless Traveled. And um, we went through a couple member changes. You know, um, we had this guitarist that sang, and um, but long story short, we played a couple local shows, and then we came across Tyler, and Tyler was in another pop punk like local band. And I saw him. This is Tyler Carter, by the way. Yes, not and, not uh, Tyler from uh, yeah, Fort George Church. Yeah, yeah, I saw Tyler Carter, and uh, his band played the same show as us. And I was just like, "Huh, that guy's good." I was like, <laughs> "I want him." And so I literally talked to my band. I sat him down. I was like, "What do you think about getting Tyler to come play with us?" And at first, they weren't about it because they didn't want to like kick our guitarist who sang out like they're like no oh, i don't want to kick anybody out like, like and i was just like i'm telling you he's gonna be good so you didn't know tyler before this show that you guys played with him not really no okay. no i had heard of their band and stuff like just around the local scene but um but yeah like uh we played with him and i saw him i was like that guy's got charisma and he can sing so i was like let's go so he came to one practice and they're like all right we'll, st- we'll test it out we'll test it out well this fool shows up to the practice and he's just like oh i'm in <laughs> Tyler, Tyler just showed up and he's just like he's saying he's saying he's saying with us and he's like oh no I'm in the band like let's go like <laughs> when's our next so show he guys just, he just decided like he so just is like oh I'm it was like, the guitarist like, let's go. out at that point um not necessarily still like in the works but after I think after the band saw all of him, a sudden they were like oh they okay. were just kind of like all right all right yeah you are all right. we know we we right. understand we get it but like so. Then we started doing a pathless travel, mm-hmm. and uh, we started we uh, pathless traveled like kind of like grew up like uh, in this local scene like like we got a not big kind of big name for ourselves and everything and like it was cool it was awesome, and um, anyways, a machines breaks up, they're still a band at this point, and uh, a machines ends up well not not breaking up yet but like Austin or whatever from the drummer from a machines like people are leaving gets, yeah he gets kicked out or leaves or something whatever I don't really know the what happened there but um he's wants to start he wants to start a new band and so he starts a new band called what was me so what was me starting up and they're just kind of like you know figuring out what members they want and like they had they already had like guitarist bassist and uh you know, like uh, another guitarist, Kevin, and everything. So, but they just needed a uh, vocalist, a vocalist or whatever. And um, so they're like, they hit up Tyler, and uh, Tyler ended up going with what was me. And I was like, Ooh, did he leave again? You behind? I was like, y'all just keep taking members from me. And I was like, Jesus, I can't catch a break. I can't I'm catch going a break. back to I'm, church. Yeah, I'm like, this is awful. Like every time I like was in a band or uh, joined a band or started a band, like like somebody would take members from that band. You know, what, what kept you going? And so, well, well, long story short, like I ended up Hans from the the guy that took Tyler's spot and was me. Like he he was kind of around our local scene, and uh, Hans took Tyler's spot in a pathless travel. And I was like, well. Like, he can sing, like, 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 maybe he can fill Tyler's shoes and we'll keep this thing going. Maybe we'll get picked up. Was it ever the same? Nah, not necessarily. Um, I mean, Hans isn't, he's not a bad singer, like, 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 but it just wasn't like, like, it wasn't Tyler and wasn't the song. It wasn't like, what the band uh, Yeah, yeah, before. you know, like, it wasn't what it originally was, but, um, and, uh, that's obviously, like, the case for, like, a lot of member changes, but. Especially you know. vocals. Vocals seem to be the, the hardest yeah. one to be able to successfully replace. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, so they did that and I played with Pathless Travel for maybe like another month or so. Then all of a sudden I get hit up by Tyler and Austin saying, we need a screamer, like come play with us. And I was just like, yes. So I went to go try out for what was me. I drew, they had this like band house and everything that they like would always rehearse at. And, uh, this guy, Mitch, um, he was like a good friend of the band and like, he would always let us rehearse at their house. So they tell me come come try out and i was like okay cool i go to try out and did some demos and then they tell me to go upstairs like this is in the basement or whatever like and then they're like all right go upstairs and uh we're gonna decide like what we think and then i guess they just listened to the demos downstairs in the basement and like like i was just sitting upstairs by myself for like an hour just like twiddling my thumbs just like i hope to god this works out so they come back upstairs and they all looked like really bummed and i was just like well Guess I'll just grab my keys now. Good seeing you, know? you guys. Yeah. Anyways, they sat down. And they were just like, uh, so we talked about it, and um, you're in the band. <laughs> and I was just like, yes. Woo! I was just like, this is nuts. So that was like, that's the whole story behind like, like how what was me and like. 
but I, I gotta ask then, and, what was it about you and Tyler that has always worked so well? Um, and did it start back in your band before Woe Is Me? Was there just a connection there between you guys? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we just like clicked, and like I just like saw so much talent in him, and like I just wanted to like I just knew that I was like I was, like this guy's gonna be like great, you know, like like, and that's how what it was like. Like we just basically took the the best from that local scene and just like made like a power band, you know, and that's what basically Woe Is Me was. Um, the guys that Kevin and Corey and Ben that played guitar and bass and uh, Ben did like keys, um, they were also in a local band that was really popular called Chain Stokes. And so basically what Woe Is Me did was just take the guys that were serious about it. And the guys just, that were doing good in the scene. Yeah, yeah, that really wanted to like like go somewhere with music. We took them and they took me and Tyler and like made a band. So know? how long after what was me was the full lineup, you, Tyler, everyone else, when did you guys start to actually get more traction on a national level as opposed to just in the Um well well right off the bat like we, we were already talking to management. Like when I came into the picture, they already had three demos. Like, cause like when I tried out they had like like a couple demos and stuff and so I just tried out to those demos. So um they had already had these like three songs written and um uh, we did that, and we were already talking to management, like Artery management and everything. But um, we sent Artery, I guess, the demos, and they liked it. And they were kind of shopping around, like, labels and stuff. And uh, Austin, of course, like, from him being in Woe's Me, or from him being in Of My, or of my Cement. Jesus, of I machines. Of Machines. He was, like, they knew who he was. Yeah, they knew who he was. Um, uh, he had connections with, like, Rise and stuff. So they were like, all right, we'll take a listen to your new project or whatever. So... Um, yeah, I guess it worked out, and uh, we got a we got a deal from Rise like uh, not too much longer after I uh, joined the band. How did that like, feel for you though? Were you like, okay, good, shit's looking good. This <coughs> oh, is kind of more well, or less the direction I want to go. Well, I was in in college at the time because I just didn't have, you know, music. Just was it wasn't going in the way that you could. Not yeah, go to yeah. So for. I was I had a job and I was going to college at the same time and practicing with what was me at the same time. So I would literally go to college and I would work after I got out of class and then I would drive to practice repeat the next day. So if anybody says that I didn't bust my ass, you're that wrong. Is a you're, lie. you're wrong. So um I, I literally busted my ass and it was seven days a week. We practiced seven days a week. Like mm -hmm. no excuses. Like like if your family member died, then okay. But other than that, like like it was seven days a week. Like like we rehearsed every constant, single day. Constant like, hustle. like constant hustle. Like I was going to school, I was working like um, so when we got the contract, uh, I, I, re I remember I was in class and, uh, and I told my, I got the text or whatever. And it was like, come to the house. Like we're getting a contract. I imagine it being like, one of those moments like where you quit your job on the spot. Oh. You stand up to your teacher and you're like, I'm out pretty much. But <laughs> like, I, I told the teacher, I was like, Hey, I left something at home. I got to go get it. And I was just like, cause it wasn't, if he, if I told my professor like, Hey, I just got a contract. He, they're going to be like, what? What are you they, talking about? That's like, great. Do you want to fail? Cool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, yeah. They wouldn't take it seriously. So I literally told my professor, I was like, yo, honestly, um, I left something at home. I need to run home again. And I told him I lived like 10 minutes down the road and I'll just be back. And he's like, okay. Like, but I literally lived like 45 minutes away. So I just left and never came back. I was going to say, did you have any intent of ever going never back? Came <laughs> never came back. Never. never came back. I was like, I'm out. I'm done. So, um, I went to the house. Um, I called my sister, first of all. Like, my sister and I are pretty close. Um, and we went to the house and uh, signed the contract. And so I was just like, finally, finally. Like, it was just years and years of just, like, just trying and, like, like, mm -hmm. like fighting Band for something. Fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure yeah. It was, was going to happen. Nonstop. And, I mean, there were so many points where I was just like, this is even worth it, you know, but like finally it paid off and, and it was awesome and it was cool after all that, you know, so we got the contract and what was me and, um, yeah, we started touring. Uh, we did our album and then started touring on it and, uh, and it was cool. Like, honestly, it only lasted for a couple of years, but you know, yeah. so then obviously, so people who know of you guys, they obviously know like the history, the name that Woe had made. Yeah. But then at, well, at what point, what led to, uh, you guys both leaving and then starting up a new project um honestly uh just control issues i guess uh within the band um i won't name any names nope. but um but uh it, it's you know it just wasn't i was like at one point i was like if this is what music is like and if this was what touring is about then i don't want any part of it you know 
Um, I, I, there's just so many rules. Just like one person was just kind of like dictating everything, you know, and it was just like, I was just like, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't play music for it to be like this. Like, this is ridiculous. You know, it was, it was, it was awful. But did um, you and Tyler both feel the same way? Is that what kind of, but like you? towards the end, like, like Tyler was so sick of it that he was going in one direction and I was so sick of it that I was going in another direction. So towards the end of it, Tyler and I weren't even really like friends mm-hmm. to be honest. Like, like, and when Tyler left, I was furious because I was like, I, I was trying to like stick it out and like, maybe it'll get better, blah, blah, blah. But like, he just like up and left and like, and at that point I was, I was, I was livid, you know, mm-hmm. I was just like, like, man, we've been playing music for years and you just up and leave dude. Like, so at that point, like I would, Tyler and I weren't on gr- the good greatest, terms. greatest good, of terms. Not on good terms. No, not at all. So, um, but uh, having said that, I'm, I mean, we both left for relatively the same reasons, you know, but like there was just so much animosity within the band that like it caused like, it caused unnecessary tension. And yeah. Drama, yeah. yeah. Sure. Like he, he was going one way and I was going another way and the band was going another way. So like it was as hard as, I mean, that's, I know that sounds weird, but, um, there was, was just so much going on. Yeah. There was so literally. much going on and like, you know, um, just so much tension and just, just, you know, like I said, like at one point I was just like, if this is what music and touring is about, then I just don't want anything to do with it. It was, it was awful. Um, uh, obviously we had some good times, you know, like, like we, we wrote, I mean, numbers, people still to this day tell me like they love numbers like, and, and that's awesome. And, and I know that we, we definitely made a dent like in the scene oh, yeah. and everything, of but, um, but you know, not to be, sorry, not to be like totally negative, but like, you know, like I know we had good times, you know, I know like. We wrote a good album, but um, it's just it just it was it was kind of hell the mm-hmm. entire time to be no, honest. No, but then so it fizzled out, and then you guys were at what point did you guys get you and Tyler get back in touch then and start well, to discuss issues? He left, and I was like, you know what, like, fuck it, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay and I'm gonna finish it out. And we had a European tour. It was, this was right after Warp Tour. Uh, we did a Warp Tour with what, what year? Was 2011, I think. I'm pretty sure it's 2011. Half a decade ago. Yeah. Yeah, so 2011, uh, we did Warp Tour. And uh, right after that, like, we were supposed to record a single and kind of start working on our next album. Um, well, Tyler, we went, we were going to, we booked studio time. To, we were just going to do a single just to kind of get everybody by until our next album. Um, so we had the song almost done. And then we are like, Tyler, just meet us at the studio. Because he was going on a little vacation. He said he was going to go to the beach, whatever. Um, well, he just didn't show up to the, <laughs> to the studio. So just like how you left I, class and never came back. Exactly. So, um, I was in Georgia at the time and the guys went down early and I can't remember why exactly I was still in Georgia, but I was like, I had something I needed to do. And I was told them I was going to drive down to Florida to the studio. And I was like, I'll just meet you guys there. Well, Austin calls me and he's like, Hey man, Tyler quit. So and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? That's what takes you off of Tyler. Yeah. So I was like, cause there was just no, like warning really there's just nothing but um obviously i and i are cool now no, so but, yeah like, so what led to the reconnection you guys were but, both um, on doing your own thing but yeah so anyways like like i stuck it out for like one more tour after that we did a just single. was it how did vocals go then uh well well when i was in georgia uh hans oh. the guy from pathless travel that took mm-hmm. tyler's spot took tyler's spot and what was me? Wow! So, <laughs> so we brought world. Hans. We brought Hans back. Full circle. So yeah. So um. So Hans came back and uh, he did what was me and I did one tour with them. We went to Europe. Oh no, I did two. My bad. Uh, went to Europe and then we did uh, Pierce the Veil and uh, Miss May I tour, and then after that I was just like I'm done. It's just not the same. Like it's going downhill. Like 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 uh, there's still like the same things were still going on. Uh, so I left and I had absolutely no goal. Mm-hmm. Um. I left and uh, what was your mindset at that point because earlier on when you were in bands and stuff you weren't sure like is this still worth it is this still worth it but you had reached the point to where you had been a band that had toured that had been signed so were you like I'm ready to give up on music or what was your intent then I I just knew well I just knew that I didn't want to be a part of that and I had no goal and like I said like court myself Corey and uh, Ben we all three quit at the same day so that's three members of what was me gone in, in one day um, so probably wasn't the best timing cause it was right before a tour that they were going to do. But, uh, I just, we had just had enough and it was, it was done. Um, mm-hmm. so, uh, yeah, so I had no goal. I had no plan of what I was going to do next. I was like, obviously I'll probably just have to go get a job and just figure out what's going on. 
and uh i was so bitter you know i was just like i didn't i had no like i wasn't like oh i'm gonna jump right back into music you know i was like i need i need a break need man like, i need some time off i need to reevaluate things and i need to get my my shit together so me and Corey and ben kind of like stuck together and like we were like you know maybe we'll start up another band well tyler was doing a solo, solo tour stuff, th yep. at this time and uh we hadn't really talked. I don't really know how we kind of got back together. I guess it just happened. Maybe we just have this energy. <laughs> it <laughs> seems like it. Like it really seems gravitational like it. pull to each other. But uh -huh. <laughs> um, I went out to we went out to his solo show and we talked that night about doing um, maybe another band, another project. And I was like, all right, I could be interested in that. And him and Ty, our DJ, uh, was Ty DJ to hit Tyler solo tour. Oh, nice. So that's how he met Ty and everything. Like, like uh, he had worked with Ty on some solo songs, and he was like, "Hey, Ty, come out on tour with me and DJ with me and, and stuff." So um, we all talked. Like me, Tyler, Ty, and Corey and Ben talked about doing another band, and that's kind of how issues came to be. Um, obviously, they're not with us anymore, but it was just like a. What sucks is that we were still trying to figure out, and people were like, call them like ex-members and everything, and I guess technically they were but like they're they're not on any music or anything it's but more or less just just kind of like hey we, we wanted to do it was being built it was being you built like, like and obviously they they weren't the best for it but um i mean i still talk to them still love the dudes still talk to ben and Corey and everything and they're great guys so um uh yeah i still see them to this day but um they just weren't like right for issues i guess so um we ended up getting aj and we had Ty, of course, and then Ty's brother, Scott, is Sky, so he played bass. So, yeah, that's kind of how everything... And now he is bassist of the year, yes. thanks to the uh, thanks AP to Music AP. Awards. But, um, so, did issues just right off the bat start to vibe really well? Did you guys know you were onto something pretty good? Yeah, uh, we knew kind of what we wanted to do. Um, well, actually, I take that back. We didn't really know what we wanted to do, but um, we knew we wanted to do something different. We didn't want to be... We didn't want to look up to another band and go, let's do that. Let's do this. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, we wanted to be weird. We wanted to be different. I mean, hence, I guess, the name Issues. Like, like we wanted to branch out. We weren't going to be the next – I mean, these are great bands, obviously. Don't get me wrong. But they're but already like, bands. We don't, we don't want to be the next of Mice and Man. We don't want to be the next that they don't remember. Like, like we want to do something weird, you know. But um, You want to be that band that someone wants to be the next band of. Yeah, exactly. So um, we didn't know – we're, and that's why – Black Diamonds is kind of sporadic. Like it's kind of all over the place. We're like, finding out who you were. Yeah, we just didn't know what we really wanted to do, and we were, we just knew we wanted to be weird and different. So, but then the debut album came out, and it yeah. like was such a big buzz. It like came in. I think it was in the top ten. Yeah, yeah. Of the Billboard. So like, what happened between Black Diamond? Um. Well, Black Diamonds. Like I said, we were still like trying to figure shit out. Um, our drummer, Case, at the time. Um. We, we weren't able, and funds are another thing. Like, like, like we didn't have enough money to fly the entire band to the studio because we recorded in Portland. So uh, when you're first starting, obviously, like, you don't have all the money in the world. You know, like, not that we do now, but, like, you know, like... like, like it's even tougher. You know, Ran yeah, in Portland. Do you, do you know a guy named Neil Engel? Neil, yeah. He worked on our newest album, Headspace. When, when I was in a band, he recorded our CD. Uh, North Carolina? Uh, no, Milano, Oregon. Oh, out of his okay. out of his parents' shed. It was in 2012. Crazy, yeah. Neil's cool. He's a cool guy. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, he worked with Chris Cummin on our newest album. That is space. so funny. Yeah, he was there. But um, but yeah, like 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 uh, we didn't have even have the money, so Case couldn't fly out. Um, we didn't fly Corey out or Ben. Um, it was just basically me and Tyler, and then AJ flew from Cali up, and uh, Ty and Sky are from. Seattle so they just kind of drove down mm -hmm. and we we're like sky we need you to play bass on our album like 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 he wasn't even a member of the band but we we're like we need bass on the album so um he just drove down like we we're just trying to cut money you know like At we didn't any, have any all the money that you could we didn't, yeah we didn't have money to pay for flights for five different people right off the bat you know all the way to Portland and back so um sky played bass on the EP and like like you know um case wasn't on it unfortunately but like um after that, like, like you know, we cut ended up cutting ties with Case and everything. But um, uh, we found Josh, who's a badass. Um, um, not to say Case isn't, you know. So, um, but uh, yeah, uh, things just clicked with Josh, and like, like things just like came together, and like, like Josh was uh, when we once we got Josh and Sky in the band, we basically just like 
we're like, all right, these guys can fucking That was the lineup. Play. You knew, like, you knew, like, this like, is issues. That is it. Like, like, and they brought a lot to the table, and it was awesome. So, uh, uh, you know, Josh um, didn't really have any say on the first EP, or Sky didn't really have much of any say because they just weren't in the band. But, um, uh, you know, on the on the full length, like, like – You all really came together. We all came together, and we were like, you know, like, like all right. Like, this is, like – this is issues, so it was really cool, you know. And they, and they, like I said, they brought a lot to the table. You know, they, they really, they really just like, I don't know. They just could play like the shit out of their instruments, and it was awesome. It was it's, crazy. It's kind of like how uh, when What Was Me came to form back in the day, how it was all the good members of the local scene. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. You found it at an even bigger level since then. Then you guys came out with the full length, and then you came out with the second full length now, and like yeah. headlining Warp Tour and doing massive tours. What do you think, five year old? Michael would think about just, what you're doing now, man. Man, I've, I've, I still like have a lot more that I want to accomplish, but like I just never thought that I would be like where I am now, you know. Um, even with War Torn, like bands that I've played with, bands that I've looked up to, um, like, like we did War Tour 2000, 2014 mm-hmm. as well, and like one of my favorite moments, and I'll never forget it till the day I die, is getting an email from Mike Shinoda saying. Tyler, Michael, we want you to perform with us on stage. You know, like, performing with Linkin Park was just, like, unreal to me, man. That was at the uh, Ventura show Yeah, yeah. of Warp Tour, yeah. where you guys jumped up on stage the, with their, them. Uh, their, like, secret show they did. And uh, it was just incredible. <laughs> what, what Performing with them was one thing, but, like, just I just, like, never took anything for granted. Like, I cherished, like, every single moment, like, I remember my tour manager saying, like, all right, I got to walk you to rehearsals. I'm like, I'm going to rehearse with Linkin Park right now. That's like, that so blows, wild. Like, we all grew up listening to Linkin exactly. Park. Exactly. And, like, that was, like, one of my favorite bands. Like, still to this day, I've, I love that band to death. And, like, they're, they're what got me into, like, new metal and stuff like that. Like, they they set the bar, man. Like, so, um, so just walking. I'll, I'll just never forget, like, walking to go rehearse with Linkin Park. And I'm just like, I'm walking to go go over a song mm-hmm. with Linkin Park. Like, w- performing with them is, like, one thing, and that was great. But just, like, I'm sitting here, like, rehearsing with Linkin Like, walking there, I was just blown away. I couldn't – I will never forget it, like, for the rest of my days. So, yeah, like I said, like, like I've accomplished a lot, and I still want to accomplish more. What are your goals? You're but singing I'm, now? You're not just screaming? You're yeah, also yeah, singing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what? another thing I wanted to do. I wanted to, I wanted to just not be a screamer, you know? I don't want to – be like michael the screamer of issues like i want to be a vocalist you know um how has that transition been for you vocally hard hard um it's been difficult i won't lie um i'm still learning i wish i would have started singing like years ago what stopped you from starting earlier um confidence honestly i'll be real like i didn't have the balls i didn't have the confidence i i thought i sucked you know but um tyler would like hear me like around and i would start singing around and he would kind of be like like you know like i uh I think you should. I think you should try it. So he kind of pushed me, and he's like, go for it, man. Just do it. What's your end game? Like, wh- where is the pinnacle for Michael? Where's the, like, I I made it? I want to – I just want to get to a point where I'm, I can, like, support a family and, like, have a career out of this. Like, I don't want to, like, be a band that, like, just – just plays for a few years and then just like, all right, I'm done. I did my time. You know, I want to be, be that Bon Jovi guy. I want to be Bon Jovi. I want to be Linkin Park. Like I want to sell out stadiums, you know, like, like, and I think that that's like everybody's goal, but like, you know, I'm not just saying that cause I want money or fame. Like I want to, no, I want to make a career out of it. Yes, like, like exactly. I don't want to do a couple of years and then be like, Oh, I, well I toured for a couple of years. Cool, man. Like it was cool. <laughs> but like, you know, I want to, make a career out of this and I, that's what I set out to do I, these are just stepping stones you know everything we do is just a stepping stone well good so. you're doing it right man and uh, hearing now your entire history your musical past yeah. you looking back now and me knowing what you've just told me you're heading in the right direction and it's Thank cool you. that uh, you guys are headlining Warped Tour thousands of kid wa- kids watching you each day and uh, I think you're, yeah. you're, you're doing the right stuff I'm hoping it's awesome. I'm trying I appreciate it, man. Yeah, of course, dude. I'm, thank you. I've been dying to kind of get like pick your brain apart. So it was awesome yeah, to chat and kind of see. But hey, good luck, man. Dude, thank kill you, it, man. Kill it for the rest of the summer. Will and do. Uh, after that, I'm sure you guys have a lot of stuff planned. But definitely, we'll yes. chat again soon. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.